Here is how I built this electric boat with a solar panel to charge several batteries with nothing but the power of the sun. With the electric motor you could even reach a pretty good top speed, but I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's back up. <laughs> I inflated a stand-up paddle board and made a frame using these aluminium extrusions, which, let's be honest, is like Lego for grown-ups. At this point I straight up eyeballed about every measurement possible and started putting it together. Now here I had to deflate it and grab the repair kit so that it would at least leak minimally. It's all acting, I, I was in fact still seeing quite a lot of leakage and here I got upset about it. Now here's the 350 watt solar panel we're going to use, which I did the math and if we're using 4 8 amp hour batteries in parallel at 24 volts, that's 768 watt hours. If the panel is charging at say 300 watts a good sunny day, let's be real, that would take 2.56 hours, you know, given that you're facing the sun all the time and it's, and it's summer. This is for the steering, I, I could angle it which made it way easier than constructing something from scratch, so I started cutting it. Now at this point I'm just making a bracket for the seat out of old plywood and once again I'm eyeballing the heck out of those ma- Comfortability Non-existent here is a 3D printed bracket I made that will attach to the aluminium frame and keep this pulley perpendicular I also 3D printed this steering arm that I attached to the scooter and I pulled a steel wire through and that would be the steering. EcoFlow can provide you with solar generators like this Delta Pro with the expansion battery for a 7.2 kilowatt hour capacity. This unit is packed with every connection you would ever need. The inverter is 3.6 kilowatts, which means you can power your dryer and washing machine at the same time, no problem. You can add 1600 watts of solar panels to it and use the app to control every setting. It's truly satisfying converting solar energy to usable power, and the Delta Pro is the perfect choice for storing that energy. The expansibility is up to 25 kilowatt hours, which could make you entirely power independent. Or you could power this lamp for 12,500 hours. Yes, I did the math. Check it out at ecoflow.com. Now, here are some key parts for this build. I 3D printed the motor housing, I reinforced it with glass fiber and epoxy, so hopefully that's not the weakest point anymore. The motor slides in here and all the way down where the shaft comes out and the impeller, the propeller, which is also 3D printed, can be joined to the shaft and it will look something like this. Now, this entire contraption is slotted into the bottom side of the stand-up pedal board in the rudder placement, where the rudder is supposed to be for the stand-up pedal board. And hopefully that's gonna work. Now when it comes to the electronics, we have a twist throttle to adjust the speed of the motor. The brushless motor is the exact same motor that we're using on the electric surfboard, but this one is 360 kV, so it's a bit slower, which means we can run a larger propeller, and that's why this one is significantly larger than the impellers that you see in the electric surfboard. And that's connected to this Flyer 400 amp speed controller, and that's, and then, um, 
what the f and the speed controller is connected to a modified servo tester together with the twist throttle and I'll link a video in the description below that shows you how to modify a servo tester for just a dollar that makes you able to use a twist throttle with a normal brushless motor and EC setup like this it's very easy and then there is a BC to take the 7 volts from this battery down to 5 volts for the servo tester. Now when it comes to the batteries, we're going to use four of these in parallel. It's a huge battery and an MPPT controller from Victron to charge them with the solar panel. The solar panel, as you saw before, is 350 watts. So quite a large panel and hopefully we will be able to charge four of these batteries in just a couple of hours on a sunny day, which would be insane. I printed these upgraded holders for the steel wire, so now the steering was a lot more precise. I needed some larger cables going from the speed controller down to the motor in the water, and I was thinking these starter cables would be perfect, but it was a straight up scam. Here I'm extending the throttle wires to the electronics box and I also reprinted a stronger steering arm as the previous one flexed quite a bit. I'm pushing in the motor and here you can see it all assembled. This is the MPPT charger where the solar panel and the batteries will be connected. And now it was time to test it so I had to take it apart again. Yay. Let's go! I'm hyped! So this is what the motor system looks like right now. I added epoxy here so no water can get in. I also printed a new propeller that's a little beefier and stronger. So let me show you how I attach it. There's a little notch that you probably can't see and that slides in and locks it in place so that it can't fall out. There we go. And then there is a tiny screw that holds it in place in the front. So now assembling this shouldn't be too hard. It's just one of those moments I'm considering not including it in the video, but I'd say you're not a true engineer till you've messed up the left and right steering. So left is right, and right is left. Power for the BC, twist throttle connection, the MPPT battery connection, the MPPT solar panel connection, battery 1, battery 2, battery 3, and battery 4. Okay, everything seems to be working, so let's put it in the water. Okay, here comes the very first test of the electric solar-powered stand-up paddle board. can't reverse I think I lost the propeller I printed a significantly longer arm and now the rudder would turn a lot more I also made a new propeller that's a bit smaller as the motor was getting quite hot. I also shortened it so it would hopefully be more balanced. The electric speed controller was also getting quite hot, so I added a 12 volt water pump. Now here's how day 2 went. The steering arm is a lot longer so I have significantly more steering which is perfect. I also added... I also added a water pump that I can turn on and off, which I'm about to show you. Just give me about two seconds. 
Okay, I can turn it on and off by a switch on the side and that's why water is pouring out here. So I have a water pump that's pumping water into the ESC and it circulates within the ESC and cools it down, which is perfect now since the water is icy cold. I also added a voltage meter so that I can always observe what the voltage is, but I don't really know when to stop using the batteries. So I guess there is no point in adding something if you don't know what you're looking at. But yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that the weather is so hideous right now. It doesn't really show the potential of this. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, I can use this to get closer to the raft. Caveman brain. It's just one of those projects we're gonna have to revisit and I love the fact that we're using such a big solar panel because it's not just an addition to the system but it relies on the power that it can put back into the batteries. A few problems that I'm still having is that the motor still seems to be quite imbalanced. You can hear this in the video. I think it would help to reduce the clearance from the propeller to the stand-up pedal board because that's quite far giving it a leverage arm to shake around. Everything else worked pretty darn good, so thank you very much for watching, you know I appreciate it. Give a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.